and uh, I will go very quickly through the last example, uh, which is size loss, recently developed by Ryan Modric to perform the iterative imaging using SpecFam, 2D, 3D, globe, or Cartesian version. So it's actually, it's very versatile in terms of what uh, seismic propagator you can uh, use. And even final difference can be, I think there is a person who work is this size loss package and use final difference as a method as a forward modeling inside. So for the for the size loss, it's a, as I say, designed to perform imaging using SpecFam, and for the full waveform inversion algorithm which is basically the main idea is to iterate and refine the model one iteration after another. This is the main idea of the adjoint state method. State method. The main idea is here is that you need two wave fields, forward model wave field, exactly what we did previously, and then a joint wave field, which is a residual wave field, the difference between obser observation and synthetics. So we have these two wave fields at each time step, we cross-correlate them, and this will give the perturbation in the model. So the the location and the how much we need to like the location where the model should be changed, and the, the match would be improved in this case between observation and synthetics. So this is the main idea idea of a joint state method and size laws here use. SpecFam, so it's again developed by Ryan Modric in Princeton. This uh, package uh, written in Python, so it's uh, like a wrap, wrapper of the SpecFam. And there are examples, uh, so this is the, you can type, you, you can Google size laws, and there is uh, information for this uh, uh, package. It's also available to download from GitHub. So uh, people who are interested to perform you know, seismic inversion, please feel free to look. So I just want to show you quickly a 3D example we done recently uh, using size laws for the same model, uh, Columbia Foothills, but the, like small part of it, of the model. You see the, the model, very complex, and the topography, and the mesh here is designed using internal mesher. So this is the slices through the model, vertical slices in X and Y direction of the true model. So this is synthetic experiment. So we know the mo like we create the model. This is uh, our true model. We, in the full waveform version, we use some guess, some initial starting velocity model, which is shown here. And it's like smooth version of the true model. So these continuities are not sharp here. We can play uh, on the with the like how close should be the this velocity to the true one. So here is maybe not the worst scenario because you can guess like there is a in that area there is a low velocity layer and then the high velocity and this block which is correspond to that structure in the true model, but still the, the contrast, uh, the difference between true and uh, starting model, the error is like more than one, the half of the kilometer per second. And this is the result using size flows, uh, using uh, waveform difference and analog difference. So you, you can see how through the iterations, about 30 iterations were done and like 60 sources, we can refine the model, and this is the true model. So compare, this is initial, we start from this model. Basically, this model can be provided from the tomography or any, any, like other tools. We apply waveform inversion and refine the model. We introduce high resolution, 
because you see the structure much more clear now in this shallow part, and this is the true model. And also slices at depth, it's about one kilometer at depth, I think this is the slice of velocity, shear rate velocity for true model, initial, and the full, full waveform inversion model. So you can see that some structure appears, the interfaces are sharper, and the actual values of velocity are much closer to the true one. So you can run uh, size laws. Here the, we have only simple 2D example, which is uh, included in uh, in the virtual uh, virtual machine example. This is a 2D checkerboard, so you see x and y. Uh, dimension and the perturbation of the velocity. And uh, in the example, which is included on virtual machine, only one source is used. And you can guess where is e the location of the source. So basically, in the area of the source only updated in this case. If you use more sources, you can get this model. So compared to the, the true VS using one source and more sources, more data, better coverage, you can compare one on, on the left most and the right most, these two figures, and you see that how inversion updates the, the model. So these examples are inside the virtual machine. And uh, let me just point out the main features, main important points. So I, this example was not cloning, so I need to go to the virtual machine. Again, we can close part view now and go to the example three. Use uh, x three size loss two D and go to the checkers, the checkerboard example. So how you how this size loss works? So in in our case, you use SpecFam as a forward modeling. So there is a, two important files where you need, you need to adapt. There is a part file and path file. Is the, let's look at the first at the path file. So basically, you just provide location of the directory where the, your model is located. For synthetic case, we have initial model and the true model. If you work with real data, you specify just the location of the data here. By providing this model in it and true, you don't need the data, and the data will be generated inside the workflow. So we have the initial model and the true model, so the, the data would be generated on the true model. Again, these real examples, you just you don't need the you you comment this line and provide the actual location of the data in the format of the SpecFam works. SpecFam 3D works with the data. So again, it could be, for this moment, it could be ASCII binary, SpecFam, SAC, and there is option with SDF, I think, in future. Okay, so we specify these files. And the SpecFam data folder. So this is uh, the the folder which contains the part file for the simulation. And if you do, inter if you use internal measure, the corresponding files for that. So this data folder location and also binary you want to use, Spectrum 3D binary. It is all set up in this file. We specify here. And part file of the size loss. Some information here is duplicated from the part file of the SpecFam 3D, which is a forward modeling algorithm. But nevertheless, uh, the workflow, we can select two options. It can be inversion, iterative appro approach, and it can be one iteration, 
so-called migration, which actually SpecFam can also do with the simple script. So for the all events to back project the forward model at wavefield and the joint wavefield, and we'll create the image directly, assuming that your velocity model is already good enough. So you skip the process of the updating your velocity, just do the migration, making the image itself. So here you use inversion, iterative update of the velocity model. And uh, a solver is a SpecFam 2D. As I say, it can be SpecFam 3D, Cartesian globe. So it's very versatile in this sense. And uh, we also run, as a, this example is 2D, we run on a serial, uh, in a serial way. If you work on the cluster, you, you specify basically type of the cluster you use. Here it is slur, you do this, should be enough, slur, LG, I think, a large system, uh, more, many cores. And, you, and then some parameters for optimization. Uh, so here's the base optimization and pre-processing pre standard, pre-processing. The good thing with the, this package, you can add features you want based on the given provided files and adapt the pre-processing and optimization as you want. So the misfit is also like we can select the misfit option. If you go, we can simply replace the waveform with another another type of the wave, uh, waveform like envelopes instead of waveform. Something like this or entire name, I think. Uh, you can use acoustic or elastic simulation because SpecFam, three, uh, SpecFam allow, to, allow to, you to choose which simulation you want. So acoustic is cheap, it's good to test. And I advise if, you, you, if you're going to use the size flows, it's better to start with the simple uh, 2D uh, version because three iterative approach will be very expensive. So 2D acoustic is fine. And you can see the density is not updated during this iterative approach, it's constant, which is also makes sense because it's very hard, the parameter is very hard to update to get reasonable values of density in the waveform inversion. And you specify the iteration numbers from one to five, number of sources and receivers, and uh, the reader and the writer. So here's the pre-processing parameters for pre-processing, basic pre-processing. So, so here for simplicity, if you have, if you want to apply uh, bandpass, I think you select like, you put the frequency here, automatically from four to eight hertz bandpass. Uh, you select some, this is muting, mute constant is the muting of the all arrivals from zero to given value. I guess I'm asking what, what tool you have to work. Oh, it's a Python based, so SciPy, Sci yeah. So NumPy also is uh, should be. I think they uh, Ryan and uh, some other guys work on implementing using OSPy for pre-processing. Yeah, it's it would be definitely. Uh, Value, valuable addition. For this moment, it's simple, simple filtering and muting using sci-fi and, and the, numpy. And the uh, files that are being passed, it's like you said that it's set in units, but yeah, you can you can see you can put binary or ASCII, which are the options of the SpecFam. Depends on the version, it should be consistent. If you use SpecFam 3D, you know the output, what are, what are the output of the SpecFam 3D, like ASCII binary and the 
uh, seismic Unix. It's, it has been, it's not, it's not done at this moment. Yeah, this is uh, the, I would say, from using this uh, size loss, this is the main part which should be and would be, could be, uh, will be improved in the near future. Then a few iterations for pre-post-processing, like you can apply smoothing to precondition the gradient make which is not a bad idea inside the waveform version. You can select the radius of the smoothing based on the frequency you work. Basically, it's a number of elements, a number of GL points here. 20 corresponds to the number of GL points, roughly four elements, four or five elements. So this is post-processing. And what, what is the, the information from the solver could be not exactly the same as in the spectrum for solver. So the size flows will read, use these values because we need to provide, we provided already information from the data, part five from the spectrum, right? So there is, this information is already there, but it can be different. You can just make it a smaller number of time steps, for example, just my issue. Sorry? It will copy inside and uh, yeah, and then number of tasks and processors inside. So this is a serial, and you change this depend on how many processors you use. Uh, so this again, this example is included in the size flows. You can and there are many more. Also on the virtual machine, there is a example uh, with the 3D, but it's not completed on the peloton. So please feel free to look in the examples provided inside the size loads. Uh, I think that's all for today. If I have something more to say. Yeah, basically this is the, what I was, what we plan to show using size flows in the 2D cartoon. After five iteration, this is so the low velocity is recovered here for the source in that area. So if, if you have questions and